So here's a question I've never been asked. Adam, how many USB charger doctors do you own? Um, and currently the answer is two. Uh, I own this very cheap one, and if I plug it into here, uh, you can see it's got an OLED screen on it, which unfortunately strobes on the camera slightly. Um, and it's not terribly accurate, and the problem is this milliamp hour accumulation here, the capacity, um, is massively inaccurate. It's gone off. And there's a bug in it, so when it goes from 399 to 400, it actually goes from 399 to 4400, or something like that. I've done a video on that before. Um, and I've got this one, which is a really good unit. Um, I tested it on a um, voltage reference and found it to be very accurate. Um, I can only assume that the current is also very accurate. When I've tested it with my meters, it seems to be pretty good. And uh, it's got a few functions on there, including a clock. It's self-powered, so it doesn't take any power from the USB power bank. If you're testing one of those, for example, you can pause it and restart and that sort of thing. And it works really well. I'm really pleased with this. And, of course, the advantage of this particular unit is it actually goes up to 50 volts and 5 amps, 250 watts. And that's really useful, especially in solar charge controller testing, that sort of thing. But two of anything is never enough, and uh, here's a third again. This is a Porter Power. So, Porter Power are a British company. Um, this is the USB Power Monitor version 3. Uh, version 2 was a bit bigger than this one. Uh, this is really rather small, um, and this is quite an interesting little device. Uh, and I thought I'd do a quick re review on it. It's uh, It's got a couple of uh, clever tricks up its sleeve. Okay, so let's test the voltage. It's showing 5.1 volts at the moment. And if I reduce that voltage to less than 4 volts, you may have heard there the unit beeps to say it's low voltage and it's probably suggesting it's about to turn off. And if I check the other way, we can see 7 volts, 8 volts, uh, 10 volts, and the decimal point has moved, so we've got less resolution there on the voltage. But as I crank this up, and we get to, uh, is it 13? 13 and a half volts, it starts flashing and beeping again, so we're reaching near the top. And I believe if we get to 15 volts, it beeps three times and it's shortly going to turn off. So that's quite a handy feature. It protects itself and it also warns you of an issue. So the main differences between the Porter Power USB Power Monitor version 2 and version 3 are these. Version 3... Uh, shows voltage, amps, and accumulated milliamp hours, whereas uh, version 2 showed volts, amps, and watts. This back uh, light stays on for five minutes before it turns off, and then you get quite a nice negative LCD that you can still view without the backlight on. Um, I'll grab an image of that as well and show that shortly. Okay, so if I plug it into this power bank here and turn it on, these thing, these power banks turn off if you don't have something going into them. So I'm going to plug another power bank into the output. I know I'm charging one power bank from another, not a normal thing to do, but anyway. And you can see it's showing 4.99 volts, 5.01 now, and it's pulling 410 milliamps, and the milliamp power figure is starting to creep up. And one of the nice things about this uh, USB charger doctor is if I unplug the power, 
give it a few seconds and plug it back in again. It comes back on and it's remembered that milliamp hours figure that we just pulled. And the one little trick this USB power monitor has got is there in the bottom right hand corner it says one and there are nine places for memories. So we're now on memory two and we're going to start accumulating there. There we go. And as we go through, seven, eight, nine, back to the first one and that figure. And it will remember all nine when you take the power out and that's quite a handy little addition. So one of the nice changes is they've put a micro USB socket on here on the end and you can um, power the meter from a separate USB source so it doesn't take any power from the device you're checking which is really handy. Um, there is just one issue with that though if I take this cable out. Um, they have put that socket very close to this cable and for example this micro SD cable will not go in at all. This one's got a slightly bigger connector um, around it and it's not going in. Now the final little trick that this USB power monitor does is um, alluded to on the back. Now you'll notice it's got one USB socket there and one USB socket there and they they are labelled USB 1 and USB 2 which I think might be a bad naming convention because they're not really USB 1 standard and USB 2 standard but it's explained here the USB 2 connector up here is USB 2.0 data and charge and the USB 1 connector is data block and smart charge. So let me explain what they mean by that. So anybody that knows anything about USB will know that it generally has four connections. One, two, three and four. At one side you've got plus and on the other side you've got minus five volts of course. And then in the middle you've got data plus and data minus and this is what you use to transfer information from your computer to your device or backwards and forwards and that sort of thing but some of the mobile phone manufacturers in recent years uh, namely Apple and Samsung in particular they've put intelligence into their chargers and for example um, Apple use um, voltages on D plus and D minus um, between 2 volts and 2.7 volts on both those pins to determine what rate they're going to charge at whether that's 1 amp, 2.1 amp or 2.4 amp uh, and I think usually, you know, you've got one pin of 2 volts and the other pin of 2.7 volts, maybe 1 amp. I can't remember exactly how it works. Um, if they're both 2.7 volts, I think that's when it goes into full whack charging mode of 2.4 amps. Uh, but Samsung took a different decision and they put, um, I think it's about a 10k resistor across D plus and D minus and that allows a Samsung phone um, or I should say a Samsung charger to charge at a higher charging rate delivering more amps and therefore charging more quickly. So there's something rarely seen here in the solar shed and that's mains power um, but it's required for this particular test um, I wondered whether I could put that smart charging to the test with a number of different chargers and perhaps a few different devices. Uh, I have noticed I've done this wrong. That's USB 2, that's USB 1. Um, so we'll just edit those. 
Um, but I've got some chargers. I've got an Amazon 1 amp, an Apple 2.4 amp, uh, an Oki 50 watt multi charger, a car charger. I'm going to try it in my computer's USB and this Samsung charger here as well. And I'm going to try my iPad mini to start with and then perhaps I'll try a couple of other devices and see if this smart charging data block system on the uh, USB power monitor works. Now I appreciate this isn't going to be terribly scientific but I am going to use the same cable at all times. It's an anchor cable and it's the Powerline Plus uh, claim to have much thicker uh, power lines in that cable than data lines so this should help with this test um, and what I'll start doing is I'll plug it in I'll note down all the results and I'll get back to you once I've done it so does the smart charging chip inside the uh, port power USB power monitor v3 work well the answer is yes and no I guess there are some improvements here on the Amazon 1 amp charger and the um, computer USB on my laptop. Um, but I've converted these results into watts, which I think makes a bit more sense here. And we can see that, as I said, on the Amazon 1 amp charger for the iPad, it was 1.15 watts increase. And apart from these two results here, there was an increase across the board, especially on this Samsung 2 amp charger. My um, iPad would only charge at 2.35 watts, um, connected directly to it effectively, but 9.5 using the smart chip in here. And I also tested a Android tablet, a Huddle um, as well. And as you can see along the bottom, there are some small increases as well with the Amazon charger and the car charger, just under 2 watts extra. Um, but I think it had less of an effect on the Android than it did the Apple device. It's also worth noting that the Orky charger, which didn't have any increase whatsoever, that claims its own smart charging, being able to charge your device at the highest rate possible, uh, wh whichever port you plug it into. So that's completely understandable. But there are some definite advantages to using the smart charge port on this uh, port of power USB power monitor, and in fact. Uh, port pal sell a little plug-in device that does the same thing, which is barely bigger than your USB uh, plug. My understanding is you plug the device into your charger and the other end into your charging cable, and it does the same thing. And it clearly is adding power. Or what I should say is it's not adding power, it's allowing your device to negotiate the fastest possible charging speed that it can with whichever charger it's connected to. So hopefully you've enjoyed this review of the Port Power USB Power Monitor V3. I think it's a handy little device and I'll be certain to use it uh, in the future. What I should have done earlier on though, I think, yeah... Oh, that's better. It's nice and shiny now. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, comment down below, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.